How's it going guys? I'm Connor from Running Warehouse. Sam here with Chad, product line manager at Saucony, and we are gonna be taking a deep dive into the new Saucony Endorphin Shift 3. Now, Chad, the Endorphin Shift was always kind of that daily trainer in the Endorphin lineup. It got those efficiency benefits that you saw in the Pro and the Speed, but it had those higher levels of cushioning and a little bit more versatile underfoot experience, that max stack height that you need for that daily training. Now taking a look at version three, we've got a complete update from top to bottom. Give us a little bit of a rundown of where the shoe started and now where it is today. Yeah, so exactly what you said, Connor. This was that everyday runnability shoe that from the Endorphin Collection that delivered that speed roll experience for the everyday runner. Something that you could really log a lot of miles in, you could go fast in, you could run easy in, you, really a versatile shoe. Now taking a look at the Shift 3, we've really updated this thing from top to bottom. As you mentioned, it's getting that elevated stack, it's getting a softer ride, a more enjoyable speed roll experience, really all of the efficiencies, all the things that you want, none of the things that you don't. Well, I think first thing we gotta do is talk about the midsole. You talked about those higher stack heights, that softer underfoot cushioning. What kind of compound now do we have in this shoe and how much higher up does that stack height go? Yeah, so we're taking some of the cues from our Spring 22 lineup of our riding guide, and we're gonna introduce that Power Run new formula into the Shift 3. So this is a lighter, softer, more energetic compound. So it's gonna really allow the user to sink into the shoe, give them a nice plush, plush experience, and also enjoy that speed roll effect. So as you mentioned, we lifted this thing up. We gave it a max stack height of 39 millimeters in the heel and 34 in the forefoot. So what we did was we actually allowed for three millimeters to go back into that midsole tooling. And this allowed for more of that elevated foam, but it also created a more enjoyable speed roll experience. It stiffened up that forefoot geometry a little bit more, gave you more of that roll and really gave you a nice efficient run. One of the other things that's really interesting about this shoe is that we introduced this Power Run Plus sock liner too. So not only do you have that higher stack of that Power Run foam, but you also have that beaded compound, that Power Run Plus material that we use in our Triumph 20, and it sits right up next to the foot. So it's the first thing your foot's stepping on, really soft, really energetic. It just has this great experience for walking, running, whatever you want the shift to do for you. Now, with some of these higher stack heights, did you find you needed to widen out the base at all to kind of uh, adjust to those higher stacks? Yeah, so when we actually worked on the shift one, one of the things that we did was we really focused on that toe down aesthetic. So we looked at, when you're looking from top down and you're wearing the shoe, how's the shoe flaring out? How do you have this footprint, so to speak? And knowing that we want to keep it a little bit slender, a little bit more narrow and not flare it out, but we still wanted to deliver that elevated stack height, we knew that we had to add a little bit more stability, specifically at the rear, to keep you centered and stable on the shoe. It's why the shoe actually sits at four millimeter drop is because that lower heel drop creates a more stable platform. With the Shift 3, we wanted to evolve upon that. So we wanted to take out some of that plastic, that TPU material that sat in the heel, that external heel counter, bring it into the midsole so it just sits at the heel, it just wraps really nicely, it cradles the foot, provides some structure to the cushioning that sits right back at that heel, centers the foot upon impact and gives you a nice, stable, smooth transition off toe off. So I keep hearing you use this word stable and I feel like with the endorphin shift, we always kind of talked about it being an inherently stable shoe. Would you classify this shoe as a stability shoe or where does it kind of fit in the spectrum of stability shoes for soccer? Yeah, it's such a gray area, right? Like the runners don't wanna be labeled as a neutral runner, a stability runner. Runners are runners. They have things that happen to them every day. They may be tired one day, they may be doing a workout. We've got triathletes like Lindsey Corbin that run and they're, they're fatigued on their long runs because they've been riding the bike for hours on end. So I put this in this category called structured cushioning. And what we mean by that is we're providing a little bit of structure to the cushioning system. So here we use that TPU counter to provide just a little structure here at the heel and stabilize you. Now, when we talk about shoes in the endorphin line, we always talk about that speed roll geometry. Can you talk about the geometry in this shoe and maybe how it's shifted a little bit since those past versions? 
Yeah, so we elevated the stack in this product. And when we did that, that creates more of this EVA compound, this power run material underfoot. When you do that, you create a stiffer geometry as well. And we wanted that to happen because we know that this new power run material is a little lower density. It's a little bit softer. It's a little bit more compliant. So we didn't want it to be too flexible and not have that speed roll effect that we got from the Endorphin Pro and the Endorphin Speed. When we actually quantify this, this shoe measures out to be right about the same amount of forefoot rigidity as what the speed is. Perfect. Now, moving on down to the outsole, again, we've got a complete update. Can you talk about the rubber layout and the flex groove seen in version three? Yeah, so if you take a look at the outsole, just to start off, you'll notice the symmetrical nature of it. So we have this uh, longitudinal flex groove that starts at the heel, runs all the way to the tip of the toe. It's a little bit deeper of a channel at the heel, which allows for some nice uh, decoupling and splitting and keeping you nice and centered on impact. But then it smooths out in the forefoot so you get full ground contact as well as a nice bar of that, that XT900 rubber, which complements all the other surrounding rubber as well. This gives you a really nice smooth lay down feel. One of the things that we did with this specific geometry of the tooling is we actually extended the, the heel bevel back a little bit more. So you come in contact with the ground maybe a little bit earlier than you would expect to normally. And this is just gonna allow for a really nice smooth transition from heel to toe off. We want everything about the shoe to just be effortless, to just be smooth, relaxing, just nice, but also feel super fast and lightweight and energetic. And we were able to deliver all of that with this new formula and this new type of foam and geometry that we're using within this footbed. Now, finishing this shoe off, we've got to talk about the upper end. Just taking a first look at it, these colors are phenomenal. The overall design language of this shoe is just much more refined. Tell us about the upper and what is new in this version. Yeah, so in our previous mo models, we actually looked at keeping it very clean and doing a little bit of hot melts or 3D prints to give it some energy or pizzazz, if you will. With this one, we took some cues from the Endorphin Series 1. So we actually looked at the mesh that was used in the Speed 1, and we applied this engineered mono mesh into the forefoot, which is really durable, really breathable, but also super lightweight. And that's very key because we wanted this aesthetic to be both supportive in the heel, breathable in the forefoot, but we wanted the overall shoe to be really lightweight. And that's a huge touch point because this model is gonna lose about an ounce from its predecessor coming in at 9.4 ounces for men. Wow, so huge weight savings, but you're still gonna get a fairly supportive wrap than you've come to know and expect from the Endorphin Shift? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the last doesn't change. The fit really experience is dialed in. It has a very nice deconstructed tongue, so it's very adaptable to the foot. It's breathable. It has engineered mesh throughout the upper that's you know super breathable, super durable, and really just supportive where you need it and trimming away all the features that you don't. So the Endorphin Shift really is kind of that daily trainer in the Endorphin line. For someone who maybe is taking a look at several of the different neutral offerings from Saucony, anything from the Triumph to the Ride, and then now here the Endorphin Shift, why might they choose this shoe over some of your other cushion neutral options? If you want a lightweight, highly cushioned, energetic experience, but you want to experience the Endorphin Collection and that speed roll effect, that's where you come to the shift. It's something that's durable to handle every day. It's soft enough to handle any run, but it has that resiliency, it has that energy, and it has that speed roll that Endorphin is really known for. If you're looking to get this shoe on your feet, it's finally here. It's available now. You can get it at runningwarehouse.com.